So for all intents and purposes, those hinges are now installed. And the next step is the first of two gaskets that go on the door. And these are designed to nest over the top of the hinges. And these gaskets fit into this kerf just so. All right, gasket one is on. So these corner gaskets get that notch and they'll thread right in there to make a continuous seal. Now on the other door, there's also a strip of this gasket that goes around the perimeter, which will end result being a triple gasketed door. And as far as I'm aware, it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, I'm sure there probably is, but I haven't built one yet. But now that that's on there, somebody's gonna be watching this video going, oh, I want a triple quad door. This stuff is, has got a lot of stretch to it. So in order to get it done correctly, you wanna cut them to their actual length first and then split differences as you're installing it. Otherwise, with a heat change, it could shrink and then your gasketing seal would be lost. There's lots of futzing to do with it. The gasketing should last at least the life of the door because since the door is usually closed, it's not getting a bunch of UV hitting it, so it's not degrading. So it should last well longer than any of us are gonna live. The next step is this fancy drop sweep. So this guy, gets installed right in the bottom here. So the beauty of this drop sweep is that when the door is open, this is its position. As soon as the door closes, then this little actuator runs into the, the frame leg and drops it for another added layer of protection. So this guy is one of the more powerful magnet catches that you can get for the tops of the door. We like to put them on the tops of the door because when, when you have a door that is over your standard size, like an extra tall door, it just helps to have a little belt and suspenders at the top to keep that top corner in. And these things, pretty powerful, especially when they're paired. The other magnet will get installed in the top of the jam at a slight offset so that these magnets are always going to want to be pulling towards each other. And they've got a bit of adjustability in that there are these spacers where you can, instead of mounting it flush here, you could mount it a little spaced out so you have the optimal gap in between both of these magnets. I think that's about all I got for you for today. 